Hey everybody, it's Pete. Welcome to today's Best Stock Picks. This is the weekend edition, so a little more laid back today. We're going to be creating a game plan for Monday, April 20th, 2020. So uh, for 2020 is the, today's game plan. The theme for the coming week of April 20th is we have some resistance ahead. We have some earnings. IBM is reporting earnings on Monday, so make sure you jot that down. Um, the one thing that I want to say is I am never one to say uh, start selling positions, or I would just flat out say start selling positions. I'm much more where I'm reading the tape, we're just watching what's going on, and you're, you're, you're following what price action is telling you. And as it gives you more clues, and, and in this case, mostly on the weekly and the daily charts, um, you just keep putting the pieces together for a trade. And right now in the major indices, we saw Friday, they were actually trading positive from the previous close, but negative on the day for virtually the entire day. Um, the closing candle on the daily charts and the weekly chart, well, the daily mostly, uh, was a little deceiving for the price action. And the reason I say that is it was negative the entire day until basically uh, the last 90 minutes. Uh, a wave of buying came in at the end of the day to give us a nice big green candle where we closed uh, on the highs. But the point I want to bring up is you start to put the clues together and there's more going on under the hood than simply watching what the indices are doing. Remember, the indices are averages of a whole bunch of stocks, depending on how many are in the indices or make up a particular ETF. But we want to also pay attention to how heavy is the engine revving. Um, and the interesting thing that we pointed out heading into Friday, we actually had on our, our cover story for Friday was profit taking was expected and we got that. So what can we expect coming in? We got some resistance in the spy coming up. We have a lot fewer stocks than you would expect making new 20 day highs. Now, again, we're not talking about 52 week highs because that's going to be hard uh, for majority of stocks the way everything sold off over the last three months, but we're not even seeing that many, um, 20 day highs, which is interesting because even if everything floating back and forth and the sell off and the rally, we're seeing fewer stocks breaking out and some of the large cap stocks that have been the leader on the way up, which we're going to mention in a couple of seconds, um, they actually had some profit taking. So fewer stocks making 20 day highs, resistance coming up in the market, uh, and the leading stocks um, having some profit taking on Friday. So, all that being said, I think next week is going to be a week where we're not necessarily going to be choppy. I think that uh, all things being equal, probably going to open up uh, higher on Monday unless something happens uh, between now and Monday. I'm recording this uh, basically Friday, uh, Saturday at noon. Um, and again, we'll, we'll pay attention to stocks for breakfast on Monday morning for any changes. But we're looking for a higher opening on Monday, some follow through. And then it's going to be really interesting to see what happens from there. I Based on, the, based on the underlying conditions, not on the ETF, so the market, the, uh, the major indices, based on the underlying conditions, what I just mentioned, uh, I'm expecting a little bit of a pullback next week. So we'll see what happens. Now, here's going to be the problem for a lot of traders. It's, it's very important to go into the day and the week with the bias. And we do the tape reading based on here's the line in the sand, here's the open, here's the low, here's the previous high, and, and well bid, well offered, and all of those kind of things. Um, we're not just going to bail on good trades. We're going to, meaning stuff that we're long, because we do have a lot of subscribers that are swing traders. Um, we're going to trail them, but the first signs of something that might be too extended, especially some stocks like we saw in ABT the other day, uh, that was up, I believe, eight days in a row or something along those lines, heading into earnings. So the news came out, we got a little bit of a pullback. Um, I'm expecting a little bit more of that next week. And here's the key that I want to get across. It's, it's, it's common for the market to have expected pullbacks. You, know, you have rallies, you have pullbacks, you have rallies, you have pullbacks. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, that all of a sudden we're going to retrace back down and the Dow's going to go all the way back down to 18,000. I'm not saying that's not going to happen next year. We're just setting a game plan for next week so we can go in saying, if this happens, this is what I'm going to do. Remember, that is the, by far the most important thing we can do as speculators is always know what we're going to do no matter what. And the more clear we are on what we expect to happen and the more definite we are to what we are going to do no matter what, trading becomes less stressful because now it's not, oh gosh, I didn't expect that. What do I do now? And you make an emotional decision after the fact. Um, we know exactly what we're going to do heading into the day and heading into the week. 
Last week, we had a really good read on the market. We said the better trades are long because we're well bid on the weekly chart, specifically the SPY I do most of my analysis on. Uh, we're going to take a look at a bunch of ETFs today to get a feel for the overall market, uh, and the entire market. Um, but we had the line in the sand, which was 277.14. Never traded below there except for the first, I think it was Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and other than that, um, it was bullish. Uh, now, if you look at the daily charts, we, you could make a strong case that we had a big push up and then five days of consolidating, which is actually a bullish continuation pattern, unless, and this is key, unless it actually goes sideways on heavier volume, and that's not what you want to see. So classic technical analysis is push and pause is good. Push and pause with a light volume pause is good for continuation. Push and pause with heavy volume is technically either distribution or accumulation, depending on where it is, and you would expect price to reverse because light volume pauses means that the selling pressure or buying pressure has simply subsided and nobody's doing anything differently. That's the key. So that's the key to re reading continuation patterns. And don't make it more complicated than that. Everything we do, keep it simple, right? So we're going to jump right in. We've got a bunch of stocks we're going to look at today. Some of the tech stocks that were leading the market last week did have some profit taking, such as Microsoft that we were looking at, Amazon, um, and a few other ones. Uh, and again, it's just a natural function of the market. But, you know, especially when some stocks travel, if I'm not mistaken, Netflix was up, I think, another 10% or something big like that. I'm not going to say crazy because that's the market we're in right now. You don't want to make it sound like it's an outlier. It is the tape that we're in right now. Um, they're just taking a breather. And um, that doesn't mean that they're uh, now great short sales, unless you happen to be a day trader who's only trading on that micro time frame. Um, and you can take advantage of it. Actually, Netflix did roll over and, and um, pulled back quite a bit. But it was also a monster rally for four days. And it was kind of overdue. And if you remember what we said heading into Friday, we said if Netflix opens here and pushes higher, we're expecting profit taking. And it's not a new long. It's a place to sell. And it actually did that. It actually opened higher, pushed higher and rolled over, if I'm not mistaken, I think it, we'll take a look, I don't have to say if I'm not mistaken, I think it came in about $25 from the high, uh, and now there's actually kind of um, two indecision candles up there. Um, so we're gonna take a look, we've got a big list of stocks, two stocks that had double average volume, in case you don't happen to watch the entire video, one was Boeing and one was Shopify, so those are gonna be a part of our game plan for today, but when something trades double average volume, and especially Boeing, because it's coming in, it basically was in a really tight trading range, a lot of people know that as a pennant, um, that's a big deal. Shopify is different though. Shopify actually had exhaustion, which is what we spotted in um, Amazon on Friday. It was actually the cover that we said Amazon reaches exhaustion and the profit taking came in. So uh, basic materials, another sector, specifically energy. A lot of those stocks are up. A few of them are up over 10%, uh, which is a big deal for that sector. Uh, although crude oil is actually still going down. So we're going to see what's going on there. So let's go to the charts. Be safe, everybody. Have a safe weekend. Uh, if you find these videos helpful, absolutely please subscribe. You'll get updates, and um, you'll be really glad that you did. So we're going to go to the charts and um, take a look and um, review the SPY first before we get into the rest. So here's what we have in the SPY, and this is actually interesting. You notice it's on the weekly chart here, um, and you can see we got resistance here. It's resistance once, twice, three times, four times, become support for the fifth time. So five different times this price has mattered. Um, now, again, I keep making the case that we're trading news and that news kind of, news kind of uh, overtakes anything on the charts, but this is significant. When something hits it at price level five times, that matters, and you can see also where we are here. Now, we're not quite um, five weeks in a row of rallying, but the size of the rally and the fact that we're coming into resistance has me believing we're going to maybe rally Monday, Tuesday, and then start to see a little bit of resistance. We're probably going to get that kind of profit taking, but again, we're not gonna guess, that's the plan, that's what's expected to happen, but no matter what, we're gonna trade what actually does happen. The whole reason for making these uh, if-then scenarios is we simply want to say, if this happens, I know exactly what I'm doing, and that's where you go from chart reader to trader, and traders are out to make money, chart readers are out to find patterns. Patterns are great, money's better, trust me, all right? So this is what we're looking at here in the SPY, and what we're gonna do now is, we basically just said we have resistance that could get hit in one day, Monday. We'll see what happens. Also, remember on Monday, we have that line in the sand as we had here. Whatever that is, above that or below that, if we're above that and above Friday's high, that means that we're still well bid and all signs keep to the aggressive trade would be the long trade and you could continue to hold anything that you have been in a swing trade from lower prices. Um, but if we get below that price and get below Friday's 
close as well, which is last week's close, uh, we're probably going to end up seeing some profit taking. So the fact that we got this looming here uh, is significant. So we're going to start out um, looking at the major ETFs and see what they look like. Obviously, the energy sector is one that I just mentioned. Pretty much still in the trading range. I do like the fact that it was actually well bid three weeks in a row, but now went inside candlesticks. So we're kind of looking to see that will that happen in the market this week. If and here's an important point. Actually, I want to come back to the um, I want to come back to the screen. Everything we're watching has been on the weekly charts because we want to make sure that we're not only talking to day traders, we're also talking to people that are swing trading, holding stuff for three, you know, three days, five days, ten days, three weeks. You need a structure for price action. But even more importantly. If you're looking to initiate new trades, and whether it's the ETF that you're watching, whether it's the stock on a weekly chart or the market, inside candlesticks represent indecision. They, use, they typically represent a pause. So whatever you happen to be watching, if it happens to be pausing on the weekly chart, meaning inside candlestick, that means your trade management should be different. So what we're kind of doing is it's actually an advanced tactic uh, that we're talking about right now. The setup on the weekly chart will affect how you manage profits and even more importantly, how you enter positions. So when you have a tighter consolidation where there's a candlestick here, actually <laughs> I use some props. When you have a candlestick here and the, and the next candlestick or the next week is on the inside of that. So this one's inside this one. That means you use more limit orders to get in and out of your trades. You get the exact price because you say, if it's here, I want to get filled at my price and that's it. Or I want to get out of here at my price and that's it. When the market's moving and it's breaking out and, and you see expansion in volatility, you can not so much market into orders. I really don't like to market into orders, but instead of exiting into pauses during consolidations, you're going to be looking to build positions. So as we're seeing here in the um, XLE, we happen to have an inside week. So that was a little bit of a tougher week there to be a little bit more aggressive because you could see this entire week was inside the previous one. So technically nothing happened as opposed to the previous week where this was well bid and this was well bid and making new price levels. That's the point that I want to make. So in the XLE, we're looking to see, is this a pause to break out or is this a pause that's going to reverse this previous three weeks of buying? So we just happened to pull that up because that was up over 10%, over 10 and a half percent last week from, uh, from where it closed. So next, we're going to actually look at. And actually, that number is not correct. That's not a, That's not positive for the week. It's actually closed. What is positive is the fact that it is inside again. We had positive that we had consolidation, which is not shocking. We just mentioned that oil is making new lows. So what we want to keep pointing out here is you have to pay attention to whether you are well bid, well offered inside, and whether or not that's going to affect how you manage your position. So what I just gave you is a big clue. If you happen to be inside. When you push up and pause, that's where you really get stingy with your profits. If you push up and pause and you're outside of the previous week, you have some room to go and you let those trades run a little bit more. Uh, so anyway, XLF financial stuff was very much in the news last week. Uh, pretty wide range because of earnings. XLI also inside candlestick, but I like the fact that it closed near the highs. And you know what? Interestingly, a lot of people in the coaching program, a big thing that we were discussing in the room during the entire week was how choppy everything was. And this is kind of um, indicative of that choppy price action. So this kind of really uh, validates what I was saying about the type of price action you're in should dictate your entries, exits, and how you manage the trade. So remember that the tighter the windows, you, it's smarter to use limit orders to get in and out of positions. The wider the window, the more profit potential, um, you don't have to be as precise in um, in exact entry prices because there's more to go, as well as when it pauses, you look for the continuation. Uh, IWM, small cap stocks, not breaking out either. Also an inside candlestick. A lot of them are closing near the highs, despite the fact that uh, we have an inside candlestick. Now, the SPY is a little bit different. SPY remains well bid. And the thing I want to bring up about the SPY that I just mentioned, you'll see here, this is actually the opening price in the SPY on Friday. And you can see that we were pretty much below the opening price the entire day. It was a pretty tough environment because right here we had clear resistance. We couldn't get through the open. It's not as short because of how, how strong it is, but none of the longs were following through either. So this last uh, hour and a half of the day is really what kind of skewed that daily candlestick. But my point is this, for the majority of the day, for five hours out of six and a half, we were trading below the opening price. And just this kind of last blip here it turned into a positive candle. So. I think some, something different is going on and the fact that we had significantly less breakout, 20-day uh, uh, breakouts tells us that 
there's a little bit less juice to the indices right now because the indices, if you could think kind of like a boat where you'll still keep going, but the engine's off. <laughs> That's actually, <laughs> I never thought of that before, but it's kind of what's going on where we, the indices kind of slid higher a little bit more, uh, but there isn't as many stocks making new 20 day highs at the same time, which the stocks make up all of these, right? So uh, what I want to do now is I just want to get into some of the longs, but I'm actually first going to talk about those two stocks. Boeing, you can see, has actually been in a consolidation. We've been watching double normal volume um, uh, breaking out here. What's interesting is we're still within this trend line, but I do like one more day of well bid with large volume candles. I'd like to see a larger candlestick, a large green candlestick break out of here and feel a little bit better. Obviously, this stock is in the news, whether you believe they should be getting all the government money or not. Completely irrelevant. We got to trade what's going on in the tape. And one more good solid day here with a gap that closed on the highs. If we get well bid with a strong close and a bigger candle, uh, this is definitely something to pay attention to. We got some short term resistance here. But again, the point that I want to make here is this is not long term order flow. We're just trading the most recent price action and the heavier volume coming out of a consolidation because everything we talked about is only two sets of price action. Consolidation leads to a breakout, breakout leads to a consolidation. So you have expansion or contraction. We have basically three weeks of contraction here. We're going to, it remains to be seen if we're going to break out and if it's tradable. If it is, the stock is, is not really super expensive. Uh, you can see it was up actually 14% on Friday, so very tradable. Shop actually on the other side where it had a monster uh, trade to the upside, and we'll take a look at the volume here. It looks very similar to what we called in Amazon on Friday to be looking to keep your profits and move. And we actually covered on Friday's video a process using two moving averages, how to scale uh, winning trades and how to, how to um, not how to scale them, how to trail them uh, using those two moving averages and two different exits for profitable trades. My point here is in shop, large body candlestick with massive increase in volume, actually double its normal volume after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of the last nine candlesticks were well bid. So we're looking for this to be exhaustion and for shop to roll over. If I was long shop, which I'm not, I'd be moving up my trailing stop loss on a swing trade dramatically. Um, and I wouldn't let this come back in. I wouldn't want to get caught in the same type of candle here on the opposite side. Stuff that was strong, we said basic materials uh, perked up, not in uptrends, uh, but definitely stuff you want to pay attention to because on the larger, uh, larger green candlestick, you can see it up 10%, but also heavier volume on the up candle, lighter volume on the down candles. And that's significant. That's part of reading the tape, right? So we're just going to take a look at a couple of these stocks. Again, they're not out of the woods. It's not by any stretch of the imagination along. This is more understanding, putting the pieces together to read the tape. So if this is up 15% next week, you're not surprised and you are prepared if there's a trade in there. Good. These are tracking journal type stuff. So CVX uh, is another one that met their criteria. Um, COP as well. Uh, the one I think that is the most interesting that's actually a play sooner uh, Cabot actually broke out of this trading range and actually had a good solid day on Friday uh, with some room to go. And again, I'm always asked, um, why am I always talking about some super expensive stocks? It's not really about the price of the stock. It's actually learning how to read the tape and do the tape reading so that you can apply it to whatever trade you happen to be looking at. I do like that this is actually in an uptrend uh, prior to these other stocks actually hopefully reversing to the upside and looking for some trades. So again, another stock that had a monster percentage move on Friday. I do like this one to actually get some follow through on Friday for a swing trade. Um, I want to talk about the few that did have um, 20 day breakouts that actually um, stuff I normally don't talk about. So we had a nice spike off the lows here at Allstate. Uh, and you can see this was a 20 day um, breakout. Some resistance here, yes, I think 115 is the next level. So even if we push up and pause, I am looking to initiate a new swing trade here, looking for 115. The fact that there's resistance here, um, I'm, I'm going to get long expecting uh, it's either going to race to 115 or it's going to break out above 115 and pause. But either way, I like the swing trade long there. Um, another one was uh, Best Buy. Oh, excuse me, BBY. Also had a 20-day breakout. Looks very, very similar. Something I want to point out again that I, I mentioned quite a bit a lot of melted candles in the stock, a lot of um, smaller body candlesticks, which makes it very, very hard for short-term trading, but easier to recognize and spot if it's a, if it's a clean trade. Uh, and we feel like right now we had a push-up, a, push a pause, a push-up, a pause, 
and another gap in a push. So it looks like we're going to look for another push here up to 80. If you're not long that stock already, there's really not a lot of downside here. If you have discipline uh, to be looking for a buy stop above 71, looking for 80, if you get long and it comes back in, you take the loss below where you just entered. Excuse me, where you entered, not a big deal, right? Starbucks, one that hasn't been uh, on my list for a while either. But again, following the same pattern that we're looking at, push up a pause, a push up a pause, very similar pause to the rest of the market and has some room to go. Not really a ton of room here. I really would love to see the 90 in play a little bit more, but this is actually where it turned around. So even if you open up higher here, um, it's kind of limited to maybe two to one risk reward, which is not awesome. But I'm really pointing out the stocks that you want to have in your watch list for next week and maybe even the next two weeks because of the 20-day breakouts. SKX is another one. Skechers had a 20-day breakout, but this one did not hold it. So we have this on the watch list for a breakout above 28. So put it on the watch list. Skechers above 28 for next week. And Target was the last one uh, that came up with a 20-day breakout. Again, another stock that has plenty of melted candles. Definitely has some room at 118, 124, the next level. Um, but again, I want to point out the trades that meet the criteria, and some of them don't meet the trade criteria. They might meet the scanning criteria, but they don't meet the trade criteria because if you take them, they end up being a one-to-one -one risk reward on the trade, which is not a good trade. So target meets the criteria, but not a great trade, which by the way, there's not a lot of good short sales out there right now. Some stocks that were strong with the week close, we mentioned these, and these are the kind of ones that are um, kind of has the spider, spider uh, sense tingling right now to say, okay, the larger cap stocks that led the market higher, Tesla, Microsoft, also closed above the open, uh, MRNA had a vicious run to the upside, closed below the open as well, so you can see some profit taking coming in there. UNH had earnings last week as well. We had a big bearish U-turn. Uh, Jerry in our uh, in our community in the uh, coaching program called very astutely about this 300-305 resistance uh, to not get long on Thursday. And this is what we ended up getting on Friday. So very good call there, Jerry. Looking for that to pull back a little bit. I would say a 50% retracement from this level. Uh, so let's say 257 to 305. So 50% of that. We're probably looking around 280 maybe a little bit lower. So maybe one more day down look before we look for another push higher. Uh, and JD was uh, one there as well that we were watching last week, also had a bearish U-turn. So looking for that one to pull back. This one I'm looking for a little bit further pullback, probably around 44. Stocks that actually are still on the long list uh, for Monday, Roku just keeps chugging long, right? Inside day though. But inside day, pause, closing above the open and has some room to go. I'm actually going to be watching Roku as an inside candlestick breakout above Friday's high for a new entry. We discussed shop. Uh, Way actually called out last week. Lulu, good job. You called this out while it's still in the consolidation. We said it needs to break above this level. Has broken above it and closed strong. Maybe some minor resistance to 230, but past that level, we're looking at 255. So watching that for a swing trade on Monday as well. Next, we have GoDaddy. GoDaddy, actually, you can see very cleanly here reading between the lines. Look at how many green candlesticks, which means traded above the open and closed above the open since the bottom. Uh, I do like this one. Uh, the fact that it's only well bid three candlesticks in a row, uh, excuse me, two candlesticks, the last two, uh, tells me I still want to be long. And if you're not long, uh, initiate the trade above Friday's high. Got some room to go here. There's really no minor or major resistance here until about 78. So another $10 to the upside in GoDaddy. Not one that moves incredibly fast. It does meet our criteria of average true range of $1.50. This will be a swing trade you might have to hang on to uh, a little bit uh, with a little bit of patience. Uh, NEM looked like it was going to sell off for a couple of days, and we have now paused for one, two, three, four, five days after a really solid momentum move higher. Um, I'm actually looking to initiate a new swing trade, but out of this, I want to see it above 60, which could happen on Monday, maybe, maybe not. Next one, we have Autodesk, really clean gap. Not quite inside, inside candlesticks here, but pretty close, followed by a gap and a close near the highs. We've got minor resistance up here around 190. Uh, I do like the long, but you have to manage the position there up into that level. Uh, next and finally, we have Citrix Systems, uh, which continues to hold above this pause as well. Some of these trades are better to get involved with um, with moving averages because 
the candles are just a little bit too choppy. So if you happen to be in a good trade and you're looking for a way to manage those winning trades and stay out of all the, the whip down, the whip up, and, and get your stop loss taken out uh, just because of one print and a good trade that you don't want to be taken out of, use two moving averages. Have one that's a little bit faster than the other one. If price comes back and trades below the first moving average, that would be a way to exit a part of your position. And then if this faster moving average actually crosses the other one, uh, that would be a signal of a change of trend and you would tighten up that trailing stop and book profits on, let's say the second piece, if you get in or out in two pieces. Um, so again, I'm looking for continuation on Monday, IBM earnings coming out on Monday, quite a few stocks that had a new 20 day breakout. If the market follows through, I'm looking for those. We just mentioned all of them, Starbucks, Bed Bath & Beyond, all stay at the top of that list. Double normal volume in Boeing, keep an eye on that. Shopify, a double normal volume. I'm not looking to get long on that. To me, that's exhaustion. I'm looking for that to reverse Monday and Tuesday and then look for another spot to get long. Um, as far as the other ones, Roku is going to be at the top of the list as well, looking for that inside candlestick breakout. Here's the thing, though. If it breaks lower, I'm letting it go. Have a bias. Know which side you want to trade on. Be disciplined. And uh, we should have another good uh, week coming up because as of right now, the SPY is still well bid. The Dow is still well bid. The only thing to pay attention to, which again, has my, uh, my antenna up right now, is the larger stocks that broke out that kept us going had some profit taking on Friday, despite the fact that the ETFs closed on the high. So if that trend continues where some bigger stocks trade negative um, and you're swing trading from the last few weeks, I am looking to scale up my trailing stops instead of adding to those positions because of how far we've come. Again, I'll never say overbought because Jesse Livermore says it, it, stocks are never too high. They're never too low. They can keep going. Um, but the percentage that we've gone, plus the fact that we have resistance, plus the fact that we have some big stocks uh, showing some signs of profit taking, that leads me to believe that we're going to see a little bit of that next week. So we'll keep an eye on the charts. We'll set that line in the sand after Monday opens up, and that's going to be our new barometer for the week. We'll look to see if we remain well bid, if we actually have um, uh, a bearish U-turn where we open higher and reverse, we'll look for some stocks on the short side. But like I said, right now, there's not really a lot of them lining up. So there's really nothing on the short side that gets my juices flowing. Uh, the airline stocks and the cruise lines are still kind of stuck in the trading range and it's still got heavy volume. So I don't see any trades there as well. So anyway, this uh, stocks, best stock picks for April 20th, 2020, which is Monday. Um, if you have any questions, absolutely leave a comment below. I'll be more than happy to get to it. Any stocks you'd like to see reviewed, absolutely do that too. And uh, please subscribe to the channel and be safe this weekend, everybody. Have an awesome day.